Hello everyone and welcome back to Prestige Reef. There is one question which I get asked more than all other questions combined. What do I keep my parameters at? The answer of which I will share with you later in this video. Something else I find interesting is when you ask people what their least favourite chore of keeping a reef tank is, testing is usually the first thing to come up time and time again. This suggests to me we know the importance of testing, we just don't want to do it. Unfortunately for lazy people like me, in my opinion, it is absolutely key to long-term success. For this reason, I painstakingly carry out six tests on three systems over the course of an hour once a week. Now, if you think I'm exaggerating when I say painstakingly, you've clearly never watched the Sunday night live stream I do with Reef Talk, where you can see I have the attention span of about eight to 12 seconds. Therefore, focusing for an hour on something I don't want to do is no easy task. Reef Kinetic have come up with a solution for this by inventing an automatic tester known as the ReefBot Lab. A combination of all the success of their previous models, as well as updates where improvements could be made. In order for full transparency, Reef Kinetic sent me one of these and requested that I create a video. However, have given me no guidance with regards to what will be said, nor have they seen it before it goes live. So if you are one of the first people watching, you will have seen it before they have. Now it's no secret that there are various automatic testers on the market. But where the ReefBot Lab stands out against its competitors is its one product that can test 18 different parameters using a range of different tests by different brands that you can buy from your local fish shop. Calcium, alkalinity, magnesium, phosphate and nitrate are the obvious ones that most people want, but it also has the ability to test ammonia, copper, iodine, iron, potassium, chlorine, bromine, silicates, carbon dioxide, pH, and general hardness. Though you might not need to know all of these all of the time, knowing some of these some of the time can be useful to identify a problem. For example, diatoms feed on silicates, but most people never test for them, even when they have diatoms. When it comes to keeping a reef tank, there are four main causes of coral death. Incorrect light, incorrect flow, incorrect water quality, and predators. During my consultations with people that are struggling, I often ask people to show me a tank that they want their tank to look like. I then ask them if they think that person tests their water, and more often than not, the response is yes. If you want to have the same success that other people have, you have to be willing to put in the same effort that other people are willing to do, or in this case, automate it. Now this isn't an unboxing video because there are already some very good videos on the ReefBot Lab. So if you want to see a man open a box, this is your guy. Plus, you get three guesses what happened to my box. I couldn't add value to these videos, so instead I wanted to actually use it for a couple of months in order to form a concrete opinion. I'll be completely honest with you, I was very hesitant to accept the ReefBot Lab at first for just one main reason. For someone like me that isn't great with technology, it looks very intimidating, and I had no desire to give myself a headache setting it up. What I can tell you is, I couldn't have been more wrong. You take it out of the box, cut off about three cable ties to stop the movable parts from swinging around in transit, insert each of the vials into these grooves, connect three tubes, and push in a couple of syringes. That's it. Physical setup took literally five minutes, and I'll tell you a little secret. I didn't even read the instructions, which shows you just how easy it was. A quick tip, when filling the vials with reagent, cut the tip of the bottle off because it's much easier to get the reagent out. These bottles are designed to slowly produce one drop at a time, therefore they aren't designed to be squeezed. I found the app just as easy to set up, however I did get stuck for about 20 minutes trying to connect to Bluetooth only to contact Reef Kinetic, who very quickly responded to me to tell me to turn the Bluetooth on my phone on. Once again, it connected instantly, so that one is on me. I did say I was bad with technology. A very simplified version of how this machine works. You use the app to schedule your tests as often as you feel necessary. These pumps on top draw in water from your tank into the test vial. The assembly in the middle will rotate to a specific vial to collect reagent for the test you're planning to do. The syringe then collects the reagent, takes it back to the test vial, 
slowly adds it while continuously monitoring the color change, similar to what we do with our eyes. Once the test is complete, you're then notified by the app and an email, and I like that it shows you the color it's detected so you can compare it yourself. The machine uses RO water to flush all the syringes and vials before testing, and then will automatically drain them to make sure there is no cross-contamination. The tubes are also primed to ensure that only new water is being tested every time. The maintenance is essentially refill the reagents, fill up the RO container, empty the waste container, and replace the syringes as and when required. It also has the ability to be recalibrated, which should be done occasionally. All of which can be done at the same time and quicker than you could do even a single round of manual testing. A machine has a significant edge over a human, and that is that it has incredible patience. And a likely side effect of that patience is increased accuracy. I have cross-checked this accuracy manually, both with Salafet tests and a HANA checker, and I'm getting very similar results. I'll be honest with you, I might even trust it a little bit more than I trust myself. I have no doubt that many of you will do what I do, where you try to get through your tests as quickly as possible. You'll take less care when you're adding the reagent, and the probability is most of us don't swirl the vials for the recommended amount of time, assuming a quick swirl is good enough. Each of the ReefBot vials, both the ones for testing and the ones holding the reagent, contain a little magnetic pill, which spins when the magnetic stirrer is below it. There is also an option to either use 20ml or 60ml vials when it comes to the ones that hold the reagent, which I think is a nice touch because the 60ml option means you will need to refill them far less, and you can also see exactly how much reagent is left in them. There is however a side effect for all this patience, and that is speed. You will be able to test your water much, much faster than the ReefBot can. On average it takes around 30 minutes just to do one test which to some people will be a downside. Having said that, I can also vacuum my house much faster than my Roomba does, but like my Roomba, all I do is put the reef butt on when I'm either asleep or out, which essentially makes the time it takes irrelevant. There is one other slight downside. It's not overly quiet. I wouldn't say it was particularly loud either. I can have it on while I'm watching TV and it doesn't bother me, but I thought it would be worth mentioning to keep this video balanced. But again, I just get it to test when I'm not around, so it becomes irrelevant. The one final thing I wanted to comment on is how it looks. I actually quite like the design. It's not small, but most automated testers aren't. And I love that it's not bright colors either, so it doesn't stand out. I have it testing three tanks, so it's not directly connected to any of them. And I bring a sample water supply to it, depending on which one I want to test. It's been sitting on the counter in my kitchen for the last two and a half months, and I haven't found it to be an eyesore. Although it has these removable doors, I keep them half off because I actually quite like watching it. There is something immensely satisfying about getting a robot to do a job you hate. One part of the design I did think was a little odd though. They haven't made this cable long enough, so it hangs down. It doesn't affect it, but I just found it unusual. Now as promised, I said at the beginning, I would let you know my key parameters. Obviously, I have a few different tanks, so they aren't all exactly the same. But as a general rule, my temperature is kept between 25 and 25.5 degrees Celsius. Salinity is kept between 1.025 and 1.026. Calcium between 420 and 450. Alkalinity roughly around 8.4. Magnesium between 1,350 and 1,400. Nitrate between 5 and 10. Phosphate between 0.04 and 0.08. I've seen it time and again where people say they can tell if their parameters are okay just by looking at their tank. And to some extent, there is a tiny element of truth in that because your corals will tell you when they are unhappy. However, as a blanket statement, that simply isn't true. And surely you should want to know if there's an issue before your corals are unhappy. Your tank will tell you when something is bothering it, but it won't tell you how long for, and just how close to the edge of survival some of your inhabitants might be. Corals are hardier than we give them credit for, and can survive for a long time in suboptimum conditions before eventually showing stress. However, when they do show it, sometimes it can be too late. Light and flow don't change on a day-to-day -day basis, which means if your corals have been thriving and growing in your tank for months, 
suddenly die, your water parameters are likely the cause. Success in this hobby doesn't come from the latest lights or powerheads. Success comes in the form of regular testing and the ability to keep parameters stable, because given enough time, a neglected tank will start to fail 100% of the time. So should you rush out and buy a ReefBot lab? That is entirely up to you. My job here is only to show you some of the pros and negatives that I have found. What I can say is I'm glad to have one as another tool that will aid me in my journey of keeping a reef tank. I hope you enjoyed watching my video. Please feel free to comment below if you have any questions. If you did enjoy it, why not click that like and subscribe button. Have a good week and I'll see you next time.